All right, welcome back to another video. Grease Monkey Repairs here. Uh, today I'm going to be fixing code PO128 on this Dodge Journey. And that has to do with the uh, thermostat. Basically, the engine's not able to reach operating temperature um, as quickly as it's meant to. Either the thermostat's stuck open or uh, sometimes closed. In this case, I'm pretty sure it's stuck open because uh, it won't uh, reach operating temp fast enough. So, just real quick, I'm going to be replacing it. It looks pretty simple. It's located right here. Looks to be a 10 millimeter bolt. I'm sure it's gonna be identical on the bottom. So before I take these off, I'm gonna go ahead and, and remove the hose. I've already got a pan placed under the car. And what you can do is drain the coolant. Usually, like nine times out of 10, the radiator has a drain plug, but that'll completely empty the system. All I'm gonna do here is undo the hose, and that way the system will just partially drain and not completely drain. Um, so let me get some pliers, get this hose off of here. Alright, so I found the easiest uh, tool to use is just regular old pliers because it's just a straight shot. Just go ahead and grab the clamp and uh, walk it off of the housing. Just like so. And then sometimes what you need to do is rotate the hose to crack it loose off of whatever it's coupled to. Because sometimes it, uh, there'll be some corrosion. Okay, this one's pretty loose. So. You know, make sure the pan is positioned right under the housing. It looks good. And make sure the system's uh, depressurized. If you do this when it's hot, you can just tell by a quick squeeze of the hose to see if it's squishy. If it's firm and pressured up and hot, wait for the motor to cool down, or else you'll get a mess of hot coolant spraying everywhere. What I was actually able to use is just a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench. I actually have it positioned on the bottom bolt right now. This is all I'm using. So there's a 10 millimeter on the bottom of the housing. I'm go ahead and remove that. Got it loose enough to take off my hand. A little bit of a dirt <laughs> build up. So here's the faulty thermostat. Okay, so this is the new thermostat housing we're gonna be putting in. Uh, this one's just an AutoZone uh, Duralast part, but I'll link, I'm sure I can find one on Amazon. I'll link it in the description. And if you are gonna go ahead and order one of these, please use the link that I post, it helps me out. Uh, but the part number to this one is 90803DL. Let's take a look at it. Whoops, it should be the housing with thermostat. It was like 15 bucks. Looks the same to me. Let's flip it over. And yeah, it's got like this little ear, both in the same spots. All right, I don't see a reason why this wouldn't work. It looks like a, a good match. I'm going to go ahead and install it. Uh, I've already cleaned the surface, so it's basically just going to be reverse order. First thing I'm going to do is position it. Alright, yeah, it's not really staying in place. All it is is the two 10 millimeter bolts. Um, I'm just going to kind of start it by hand. And as far as torquing, <laughs> torque, I have a hard time saying torquing. Um, what I like to, a, a good tip is like, try to remember how hard it was to break the bolt loose. And if it wasn't very hard, then it doesn't, you know, it's, it shouldn't, you shouldn't put that much effort into actually tightening it back up. Especially being a plastic part with a rubber, basically O-ring style gasket. Anything like this, it's very, uh, you don't have to tighten it hard at all. Um, me, I mean, I've got some experience and I know I, I know the feel for it, but as far as the torque spec, I'm sure it's, uh, you know, I'll look it up and I'll see if I can post it. Just in case it, uh, you're like uncomfortable or if you don't have the feel for how tight something is. Um, but I'm pretty confident I could just snug it up and um, have a good idea of how tight it needs to be. 
All right, so I've got the two uh, 10 millimeter bolts snugged up. All I used was the same 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench. Um, it fit the bottom and top bolt pretty easily. Uh, there's there's a good amount of room to work with here. It's not in a very tight spot. Um, so now I just gotta put the uh, radiator hose back into place and move the hose clamp up. Make sure the hose is all the way up. It's got this little stop right here. You want the hose to slide all the way up to that point. And just try to position the hose clamp on top of the grooves. You can kind of see where the hose clamp was at before you took it off. So just put it back in the same spot. That's usually a good idea. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna need two hands for this and then I'll be back in a second. All right, so right now I'm just positioning the hose clamp. It looks about good right there. Um, so basically done um, from here all you really got to do is top off the coolant and uh, it's a good idea to go ahead and bleed the system because you'd be surprised what a small uh, amount of air the system could actually do come on now it's like we're pretty tight um, so yeah sometimes it's not good enough to just fill up the system um, let it run let it get hot up to operating temperature leave the cap off so it can kind of bleed itself and, and sometimes you can even notice some uh, some bubbles form and ooh, that's some dirty coolant. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and fire it up. Well first I'm going to put some uh, some coolant and then start it up and let it get hot. So I've got this, um, it's somewhat of a bleeder. All it is is like this giant funnel and it comes with uh, a bunch of different fittings different kind of like radiator reservoir caps and um, what you do is you just hook it up to wherever you fill the coolant you fill it up with water or coolant and it'll be you just let it run let it get hot up to operating temperature so the thermostat opens and as you can see it'll bleed the bulk the bubbling is uh, air in the system so uh, these are pretty cool um, here's the part number to this one two four six eight zero I'll link this in the description too it uh, just makes it a lot easier and um, you avoid air pockets in the system and the chance of overheating in the future. Um, since I hardly lost any coolant, I'm just using just using water. Uh, sometimes it could do more harm mixing different kinds of coolant than uh, it, you know if you just lost a little bit of coolant, it's it's safe enough to add water. I mean it's supposed to be 50% coolant, 50% water anyway. And um, yeah, I just you know water is usually fine just to top off the system. As you can see, the reservoir still has plenty of uh, concentrated coolant in there. Just to kind of show you how it works, I'm gonna squeeze the radiator hose and you can see the air coming out. Yeah, so basically you wanna let it run until you see no bubbles at all. All right, that's burning for a couple minutes. It finally stopped bubbling. But before I call this uh, done, what I'm gonna do is grab my scanner just make sure that PO128 code didn't come back. Basically, it would come on when it would reach uh, or try to reach operating temperature. And I guess it couldn't do it in time. It, it would take too long, but that, that, that was the issue. So I'm just gonna scan it real quick. I had cleared the codes before I uh, started this job. All right, so the car is at operating temperature. I'm gonna go ahead and scan the codes. And sorry about the glare. I've got oily, nasty hands and phone's all dirty. But uh, you'll still get the idea. Uh, if you wonder what scanner this is, it's an Alltel MK808. It's kind of like their entry level scanner, but it does a lot. No fault codes detected, sweet. Wow, okay, I guess that's a confirmed fix. Uh, she, The customer still does have a traction control light or stability track light on. And that is on because it needs a multi-axis sensor and hopefully maybe that'll be a, a video here coming pretty soon if she uh, does want to fix that but for today uh, fix the check engine light I resurfaced the rotors and did an oil change so hopefully we have a happy customer like always if you like this video please don't forget to like and subscribe it really helps and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one thanks for watching